This time on Monkey Life, an unexpected arrival is on the way at the golden-cheeked Gibbon house, and it's causing concern. There is no sign of um, that baby coming out naturally and have actually called out the vet and we're just waiting on him. A female from France fails to charm ageing Saki monkey Jethro. Jethro doesn't seem that bothered, to be honest. But the care team are optimistic. Hopefully they'll just get more and more used to each other as the days pass. And it's all gone nuts in the capuchin enclosure. Monkey World in Dorset, buried deep in the English countryside, is the largest sanctuary of its kind on the planet. The team, led by Dr. Alison Cronin, rescue and rehabilitate abused and unwanted primates from all over the world. It smells a bit macaque in there, but yeah, we're good. The park provides a home for more than 250 monkeys and apes from 20 different species. All the primates in the park enjoy the companionship of their own kind, and many close relationships are formed. None more so than golden-cheeked gibbons Kim and Tien. They're totally loved up. Put together as young gibbons just two years ago, they bonded quickly. Now they're rarely out of each other's reach and are often found snuggled up together. They will usually um, hug when they're just sitting up in the trees. They will hug when they're sitting waiting for their dinner. They will hug in the morning when they're watching up the hill for us to come down with breakfast. They are an incredibly close couple and usually having some kind of physical contact. Because Monkey World is a rescue centre, most of the female primates are given contraception to control breeding. But recently, keepers began to suspect Kim might be pregnant and did a test. The result was negative. But this morning, the team arrived to find Kim curled up on her own, hugging her tummy and showing signs of distress. Straight away, it was very obvious that Kim wasn't quite herself. She was lying down on top of the radiator and she was stretched out and just looking in a very uncomfortable position and clearly not very happy. Testing gibbons to see if they're pregnant isn't easy and it's notoriously difficult to get accurate results. So the keepers kept a watchful eye on the young gibbon. And now Kim's unusual behavior this morning and the way her stomach is contracting has led the care team to believe she's definitely pregnant and what's more could be about to have the baby. We're hoping what we're seeing right now is Kim going through the early stages of labor and we're gonna let nature run its course and obviously try to not intervene or give her any stress or anything. Just keep quiet and keep a close eye on her over the next couple of the hours. Hopefully, later on today, we will see a little baby um, and a very happy Kim. Another primate at the park who could do with a little love and companionship is elderly Saki monkey Jethro. And today, he's in for a big surprise. Jethro is a 26-year-old white-faced male Saki monkey. He was hand-reared and lived as a pet until four years ago, when he arrived at the park. Since then, he's had company, but not of his own kind. And nowadays, he shares an enclosure with the squirrel monkeys. Jethro is an extremely popular pensioner at the park, with a gentle nature, but he likes to keep himself to himself. He spent a long time living with humans, but he does have some natural Saki behaviors. He knows how to flirt, which Saki monkeys do by flicking their tongues, and it's hoped he may use his moves on a new companion. What he doesn't know is that Alison has been working hard to find him one, and she's on her way. We actually have a new arrival at the park today. Um, her name is Chloe, and she's a white-faced Saki monkey, and hopefully she's going to be a new friend for Jethro. Unlike the males, females are brown. Chloe has arrived from a zoo in France, where she was living with a group of young Sarkis. She's also in her 20s, and it's hoped Jethro and Chloe will live out their twilight years together. 
It's going to be a life-changing day for Jethro. He hasn't lived with another female Saki in quite a few years, um, since his sister died when he was still being kept as a pet. So we're not really sure what he's going to do. He is quite human-focused, so he might not really pay her a lot of attention, um, or he might have um, missed Saki uh, company quite a lot. So in, in that case, he'd be really interested in her. There you go, baby. To let go. That's it. Come out. Oh, hello. Hi there. Before being introduced, the team place the pair in adjacent bedrooms so they can see, smell, and hear each other. Jethro is a quiet and gentle geriatric, and the team feel he's more likely to be bemused than aggressive when they meet. Luckily, it seems Chloe's a pretty laid-back lady, and the prospects for friendship look hopeful. But introductions are a serious business, so they take place in the bedrooms where the team can easily intervene if necessary. She's pretty calm and chilled out. I don't think she's panicked in any way. She isn't, but she has spotted Jethro. She's already showing lots of interest in, in him. When we walked her in, in the crate, she was at the front of the crate looking at him straight away. And there is um, clear perspex between the two rooms, um, but it's clear perspex that she has been able to see him and she has been watching him already. So she knows he's there and she looks quite eager to meet him. And with Jethro looking calm and mellow about the whole business, the team decide they can meet. Chloe walks very slowly and cautiously into Jethro's room. The first thing she does is go over to introduce herself. But Chloe might be a little too forward for him. After all, it's been a long time since he's had a lady friend. I thought he was a bit confused, maybe, by her. Um, he's, he's moving away from her a bit, but she seems very keen on him and is following him around and, and sniffing at him. So yeah, it's going really well so far. Just need Jethro to realise that she's actually just going to be a friend and not to be not to be wary of her. Having been slightly rebuffed, Chloe sets off to explore her surroundings and is pretty confident despite the new environment. She's been all the way around um, and knows where everything is, so she seems quite content. Jethro, meanwhile, is scent marking, rubbing his neck on the branches to show it's his territory. Although not aggressive, he's not used to sharing his space and wants the new arrival to know exactly whose territory this is. Despite him trying to guard his patch, Chloe isn't bothered, and as far as she's concerned, this is her new home. Jethro doesn't seem that bothered, to be honest. Um, he's quite happy with her just being in the room with him. Hopefully, they'll just get more and more used to each other as the days pass. Over in Franco's Capuchin group, it's going to be a morning of monkey puzzles. Most of this group are youngsters, and since they were rescued from laboratory cages in Chile in 2008, they've grown up a lot. They've learned great moves and many natural foraging skills. Today, they've been given two puzzling treats, nuts in their shells and frozen mango. Capuchins are clever. In the wild, they smash open shellfish, but frozen mango just won't crack. Picking bits off is the answer. Fabian knows to crack this problem, he's going to need a bit of peace and quiet. Marcy tries the tooth cracker approach, cleverly turning the nut to find weak spots. William opts for brute force, repeatedly bashing the nut on the wooden beam. 
But Eliza hasn't quite got the hang of this yet. She won't get anywhere hitting her nut on a rubber hose. But clever Frida is working on the theory it takes a nut to crack a nut and is hitting hers against the metal nuts and bolts of the climbing frame. Finding one isn't enough, she tries all three in the pipe shelter. And she's in. For Franco, a laid-back, relaxed approach has brought rewards. But some of his friends are finding the whole thing very frustrating. The last puzzle is in the pond. Capuchins don't swim, so how does a hungry monkey get to a floating nut? Franco plays the waiting game. Till it drifts into range. But Frida loses patience and pushes hers away by mistake. For youngest lad Fabian, it's mission impossible. So he hops down to prove the youngest can be the cleverest capuchin of all. At the Gibbon house, where keepers suspect golden-cheeked Kim is about to give birth, the young primate is still looking uncomfortable. It's been several hours now and there's been no change in her condition. We're starting to be really quite concerned now. Um, the labour that she's going through doesn't seem to be pro progressing at all. Um, there is no sign of um, that baby coming out naturally. and have actually called out the vet as well and we're just waiting on him. We're also noticing that Tien's just kind of hanging back out of the way. Normally he's very attentive and giving her lots of hugs, but he's just keeping out of her way right now and, and letting her get on with things. Most primates at the park give birth on their own. Bringing in the vet signals real concern amongst the care team. Hello. Hi. How are you? <laughs> vet Thaisar thinks they've made the right decision. OK, but it has been actively Australian since the morning, since early morning. Since so, 9 o'clock, yeah. So we are, we are already, already the process has started. I think it will be, it, be silly not to, not to do something about it now. Mm -hmm. And that means Kim will need to be sedated so she can be taken to the park's hospital for days are to examine her. OK, let's go. If Kim is in labour, she may need a caesarean, and there's only ever been two of those in the history of the park. It's a big worry. The whole team are here to help, and Alison has been called in too. Kim is given an anaesthetic so the vet can perform an ultrasound to check that there is a baby. It's moving. Whether that's her moving it or it moving, it's moving. The scan shows a definite heartbeat, but there could be a problem. This is low. They should be faster than that, obviously. It's got a massive head. Thazar's going to have to perform an emergency caesarean to get this baby out in time. I think now time goes against us a bit. Is it going to be big enough? No. No. <laughs> it's huge. As the baby appears, there may be a clue why Kim was so uncomfortable. Her waters haven't broken, even though she's been having contractions for hours. Okay, Look at the head. That's, that's it. Perfect. Uh. But there is something wrong. The baby should be breathing on its own by now. This little one looks like it needs help. Just a 
train that he was yeah. Okay, all yours. So if he goes with a with clamp, the, with the you can yeah. get rid of the clamp whenever you want. That's great, thank you. The first job is clearing the airway. And rubbing should stimulate the lungs. But Alison's worried. I'm not convinced that we're doing a whole lot here, Thesor. For the next 20 minutes, Alison uses all her experience to try and get the baby gibbon to breathe. Come on, gag, gasp, do anything. But it's not looking good. I'm not seeing any breaths, I'm not feeling any breaths. There's certainly no gasping. Nothing is working. I think we've lost him. Anybody disagree? No. All the team can do now is concentrate on Mom Kim and hope they can successfully bring her round from the anaesthetic. At Lavar's Woolly Monkey Enclosure, there are hard to get treats on offer. Pine cones packed with raisins, nuts, and seeds. Pine trees grow in the enclosure, so the woolies are used to pulling apart these cones to look for insects and nuts. Lavar's group are really good with enrichment, um, anything that's a bit of fun, a bit different, um, and obviously you've got some nice taste treats in there, um, they really enjoy them. There are five woolies in Lavar's group. Younger boys Enzo, Manny, and Bueno Junior are all lower ranking. The only lady is Quappa. Quappa is quite a feisty, dominant female, so she takes no nonsense from the boys. Uh, Lavar's very laid back, chilled out, dominant male. Does like to have a good old play session with the boys when he's feeling jolly. Uh, other than that, he kind of just takes a step back and lets everybody else get on with it. Uh, and then you've got the three young boys, which is a really nice combination. They like to have a bit of fun, have a good play session together. So um, overall, it's a really lovely group that works really well. And they're all pretty switched on when it comes to treats. Feisty female Quapper starts hoarding hers. while Bueno Jr. takes his away from other prying fingers. And Enzo doesn't hang around to eat his. They've got such delicate little fingers um, that they're really good at manipulating things, you know, getting the tiny seeds and raisins out of the pine cones, small gaps, anything like that. There, And they'll spend a bit of time trying to do it. If they really want something, um, then they will uh, put in the effort to get it out. Once the pine cones have been plundered, it's time to see what else is about. Enzo's keen on some greens. Levar has added juicy melon to his five a day. It's so good, Quapper's prepared to go to any efforts to reach it. Four-year-old Bueno Jr. is the most recent addition to the group. He was rejected as a baby by his mum, Sarah, following an emergency caesarean section. But now, he's thriving. Bueno Jr. was one of our hand-reared uh, woolly monkeys, but he really seems to have taken a shine to Lavar when he got put in the group. Kind of must see him as a bit of a role model. He kind of tries to copy him doing certain things uh, and follows him around a lot. And Lavar's very good, he's very patient with him, and he does enjoy having a play session with him as well. It's been a sad afternoon at the hospital. Kim, the golden-cheeked gibbon, has lost her baby following an emergency caesarean operation. I think we've lost him. But now the focus is on Kim. The team are waiting for her to wake up from her first ever anaesthetic. 
couple miss Kim. They need to get her back into a crate and keep an eye on her as she comes around. It's vital she's closely monitored, so Vet Thesar checks her heart rate. He's keen she doesn't go back to sleep. Come on, come on. Gimme, gimme. OK, OK. I know, I know. I know. You are a bit sleepy and you're already happy there. Yeah. What I would like you to do is just keep bothering her. Yep. Yes. Okay. Don't let her go to sleep. OK. No. I don't know if you guys want to take an extra big yes. blanket with you or get one, because then... The other issue is the cold. She needs to stay really warm as she comes round. So once she's back home, the team put a blanket on the floor under her crate. But within minutes, an unsteady Kim gets out of the crate. Gibbons live high in tops of trees for safety, so her natural instinct is to try and go up. Tien isn't sure what to make of his wobbly partner. Normally, Tien would give Kim a hug, but she's behaving differently, and the smell of the hospital and people is probably confusing for him. So he leaves Kim curled up in the corner to recover on her own. Next time on Monkey Life. Ruby, the park's newest marmoset, gets to meet the boys. But it doesn't all go according to plan. Hey, yeah, I'll give him a little squirt. And after a breakfast of fruit and jelly for the orangs, Roro's left with the washing up. 